Upanim. All right. After you go to the bathroom, do you need to wash three times or eat on each hand, or is it getting them wet enough? How about before davening and after cutting your nails? So, in Al Rebbe Shochalor of Simon Dalit, if you'd ches, Al Rebbe writes, Eilud Varim Shein Tzrichi Netila B'Mayim Dafka. The following things you have to specifically use water. The Lei B'Chol Midi Demenaki. You can't just go like this to clean your hands. Just take this one. Remember. But these following things you do not have to wash three times. He has a list, and then he says, um, one of the things are, oh, I'm sorry, the first thing is, so leaving the bathroom you do not have to wash three times. And then he says, someone that cuts his nails also does not have to wash three times. And he says that, that, that basically a whole bunch of other things. So those th- those two particular things, al Rebbe clearly writes, you don't have to do three times. It's enough to wash your hands and make them wet. Regarding before davening, so it, it's not over here, different place, but before shachris you have to wash three times, but that we do by Negel Vas in the morning, and that works for davening as well. Before Mincha and Mairev, it's enough just to wash your hands. You do not have to do three times. However, um, the Rebbe's minig is the Rebbe also before Mincha and Mairev, have to wash three times in 770. We bring the Rebbe Ashish to the Kvar to his place to wash before davening. So that's the Rebbe's minig, and many Chsidim uh, adopt the minig as well. But according to Allah, that's not necessary. It could be there is, but the Rebbe doesn't bring it. I didn't see. I, I, I saw about, uh, I saw for, for, for nails, I saw a hidu, but I'll never doesn't say it, so I don't know. Could you like sitting such a thing, but I didn't hear it. Wait, you, you have to make a bracha when you wash your hands, like, just like... You only bracha, make a bracha in the morning and before hamid. But you, you're supposed to wash other times as well, but then you don't make a bracha. Will a miscarriage have trias amesim? So this question was asked at Meisha Feinstein. It looks like there was a, a bracha that uh, his, I guess his... his Parents, his mother miscarried many times after he was born, and his mother adopted another child. So he was wondering if he's, is, if he's, is he ever going to have biological brothers? That's what seems like the question. So Rabbi Meisha writes to him, Bidvar Sheiloscha, Im Nefalim Yukumun Kshayoviz Manchias Amesim Bemehera. So he says, Ravino, who is a Basra, meaning he's one of the last Amiroim, that means Allah is like him, writes in the, says in Mosech the Sanhedrin, the Gemara says, Koton Meyema Seibol Elam Habo, Yisho Shenizra. Pirush Rashi, Yisho Shenikla Tazer Rabbi Mei Yisho. The moment that the, there's conception, the moment that the, the child beats, since the baby begins to be formed in the mother's stomach, Afilo he pila ima even nimcha, even though the the, the, the mother miscarried, Yesh lo echelik laosid, he has a chelik leilam haba, and he brings from Ksubis as well. The pasuk says nivelasi yukumon that even the veilus, even since the dead pieces of flesh kaviyachol will come to tchias amesim. The teachers also in the folly, he brings out a few other sources for that as well. There's a Yerushalmi that also talks about it. The Gemara Yerushalmi brings a shita as well. So that's a Rav Meisha Paskins that is going to be tchias amesim even for a tinoik. Rabbi Shulchan Aruch, maybe you can argue, but that's talking about something else about the bris, whatever. Bein kam b'koyme. But Kavon Rav Meisha is a pasuk, and that's how he paskins. So I would say we can go by that. What's the Indian of a woman stepping on a nail? Is it halachic, kabbalistic? What are the gedorim? So the Rebbe Shocholorach Reish Samech, Simon Reish Samech, Siif Dalid. The Rebbe writes, Haserif Tzipornayim Chosid. Someone that burns his nails after he cuts them is a Chosid. Koivron Tzadik. If you bury them in the ground, then you're a Tzadik. If you're Zorkon, if you throw them on the ground, you're a Rosha. Why? Because maybe a woman that's pregnant will step on it and she'll have a, she'll miscarry. You're allowed to throw them in a base medrash and a similar place. A place where women don't really walk around. You should not be you should not be concerned. Maybe some of them will sweep it out and the, the nails will fall outside. Why not? Because even if he's gonna, she's going to step on it outside, it won't, it won't have a negative effect. They only have, they only have the negative effect if they, if they're in the place where the person threw them on the ground. Once they were swept away, even though a woman steps on it, that does not have an effect. 
That's the Gedardim. Now, the Rebbe writes it in Shochon Aruch as Halacha based on the Gemara. I saw one explanation for it, but that explanation doesn't just explain this detail. The explanation that I saw is brought down that it's a gross thing to see, and a woman that's pregnant is more sensitive. So, if she's going to see something that's gross, that could cause her chas v'shalom to miscarry. But according to that, then wherever it would be, it would be the same thing. But we see that Halacha is not like that. That might be part of a reason. It might be other reasons of Bikabal I didn't find. But the Kopanim, those are the Gedorim, if you want to see inside. Like I said, Simon Reish Samach, Siv Dalit. Does this only apply for, for uh, Yidin or just uh, also for Goyim? I don't know. I don't know. <coughs> Why was Igris made? Igris Kaidish. I assume that's the question. Igris Kaidish are the Rebbe's letters. <coughs> so I'm trying to find it. I, I, I saw it brought down, but I don't have a, the actual Sefer here. Chelek Yud Beis, because I couldn't find it. But uh, it's, uh, I saw that it says in the Mavi of Chelek Yud Beis that uh, the Rebbe writes, I mean, the Mavi, the, the, the Manichim write, but Mashma, the Rebbe instructed them to write this, that uh, the Rebbe writes in the Akdama for Tanya that he's writing all the answers to all the questions. Any question you might have in Avedas Hashem, the Alter Rebbe is writing it in Tanya, and the Rebbe is saying the reason why he's writing it is because there isn't enough time anymore for Yechidus, Baruch Hashem, Anash, are very, uh, it's a very, very large, large amount of people. There isn't enough time to answer each individual person in Yechidus. So the Rebbe says, I'm writing all the answers to all the questions individually in Tanya. So it seems like that's the Kavon over here also, that the point of Igris is for people to see the Rebbe's Kav, the Rebbe's Shit and everything. Um, there are many people that have a Seder Limud and learning Igris every day. They learn a certain amount of letters. Everybody knows of the minute that some people have that they write letters to the Rebbe and they put it in Igris and they find answers over there. But uh, even people that don't do that, but definitely learning the Rebbe's letters is a very important thing. You see the Rebbe's Shita, the Rebbe's Kav, the way the Rebbe looks at things, the way the Rebbe it tells people what to do things and so on. Um, and I also saw a story that they say that when the Igris came out, when it started coming out, so the Rebbe asked Rabbi Simpson, when the Rebbe is Maskirim, the Rebbe asked him, are people are learning the Igris, are they kachan zich in Igris? So he said that his son at the time was a Bach in Yeshiv in Maristan, and he said, yeah, they're the Bachrim, are kachan zich, they're learning the Igris. So the Rebbe said that the Bachrim, I understand, what about the young Galite? Like, I, want, I want all the Siddim, in other words, to be learning the, to be learning the letters. So the Rebbe encourages, and it's for, for sure Kadai, and the Pasha is to teach us the Rebbe Shitta what to do. There are, there are people that are going to tell you that the purpose of the Igris is because of today, after Gimel Tamas, that we won't, we, since today we can't get an actual answers from the Rebbe, so therefore the Rebbe prepared it from before. That's a that people say, could be, could be not, I don't know. But this is the simple explanation of the Rebbe, what seems like the Rebbe instructed people to write. Uh -huh. We have some English, English, English. <laughs> English Igris in the other room. I think there's only five volumes as far as I know. Maybe there's more already by now. No, huh? no we just got no, so six. Oh, six already, yeah. There's six. That's only six. That's it. No, there's, there's two things. Those are the ones that were in English originally, but ah. the other ones that have that they translated. Right. Okay, so there you go. Yeah. There's one. There's English that he wrote in English, then translated. And I, I'm pretty sure there's also Igris translated into the original Hebrew yeah. translated yeah, 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 yeah. So the kids, if you want, you can figure it out. There's enough going around there to find different Igris. <coughs> Are you allowed to learn during Chazara Sashats? What about reading? So, <coughs> there's, um, in, the, in the Siddur, there's a lot of uh, small letters. Every once in a while there are small letters with instructions. Now, some of these small letters are the Alter Rebbe, what he wrote in Siddur. The Alter Rebbe wrote in Siddur with Halachas. And some of the small letters are not this, are quotes from Shulchan Aruch. It's really, it's, it's, it's just a, the, I'm not sure who was in charge of this, but when they printed the Siddur, they printed Halachas of Shulchan Aruch. So whenever you see in this Siddur small letters, it's not, not necessarily, is it Siddur, it's a Shulchan Aruch. Alter Rebbe wrote a Siddur and Shulchan Aruch, and sometimes the Halachas are different. A Kopanim over here, the Alter Rebbe in the Shulchan Aruch, it's from Kuf Chavdalid. He brings over here, Everyone has to be quiet and have kavana. If there aren't nine people having kavana, it's very possible that the brachis are brachis levatola. Because there has to be ten people focusing. You should be screaming at. You should yell at people that learn in the middle of Chazar Shashats or say Tachanunim, Tehillim, and stuff like that. 
Vafilu imachavnim l'soyf abrocha lanis omen karoi. Even though these people make sure to stop and answer omen at the end, lo yafa him oisim. They're not. It's 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 a wrong thing to do. So that's what Rabbi Shochan Aruch. But in the Pisgah Chuvis, they bring over here that uh, there's a divrei ramemi pano, one of the the achreinim of the Chuvis. He writes, he's melamed schus on those that are not so careful and learn by Chazal Sashatz. He says, Raiva oilam ain is hard. Most people are not as careful, and he brings over here. Um, <coughs> he says, "V'chol gaigav neikam b'shomanachlem di Yisrael." So Kitzur is is a little bit melamed tzchus on it. So kaponim lachatchila definitely not to. But pale mamish, uh, a lot of people are not too careful. My father told me when he was a bacher by the Rebbe. They saw the Rebbe would have, well, would once in a while also open up a chumish or something in the middle of Chazara Sashat. Ah? No, when he was davening, the Rebbe wouldn't have been here. The Rebbe wouldn't have come out. When the Rebbe would come out, no, not not that's what I'm talking about. The Rebbe would have with the Midian, and then he would look at Chazal Sashat and the Sefer. But the Kabbalim is the is not the wrong thing. Obviously, compare the Rebbe, not compare the Rebbe. It's all discussion. But Kabbalim is that you see the Rebbe Mipano brings the Chachila that it's, it's obviously better not to. But you can be melamed tzchus on those people that are doing it. Also, seventy. There's a lot of people there. So like, yeah, but he, he writes a Shulchan I didn't read the whole thing. He says every person should consider himself to be one of the nine, not to say there's other people besides. Yeah, but like seventy. That's not what he says. I don't know. Different question. If someone, um, if someone, so if someone actually they're learning something during the first shot. What should you do? Should you yell at him? Yeah. Right. <laughs> huh? No. He brings over here to have to hire a person, a big strong guy, to go around yelling at everybody. That's what he, no. what he says. Yishleman is ish chazok balzroya, a strong person with a strong arm. The yirei shemaim. This is more for people speaking Bechlau. Have a stick and go around and punish whoever talks in the middle of Chazar Sashat. Many years ago in Postal, there was a, when, it, when there was only one show, so there was a year that uh, he was very into making everyone quiet. Unfortunately, it had the opposite results. So, Derech these things don't really work. What should you actually do? What should you do? You should make sure that you pay attention and listen and focus. Bechlau, that everyone should take care of themselves. That's the most important thing. If someone older um, is learning something, Huh? Tell him to stop if someone's over. Playing songs and so so. You can ask him this halacha. You can ask him. In the past, when I want to know, I look and I look in the safe for I, I, I used to be a kutz of bacher him. I used to always find to give me musr. So now I look in the safe I got like twenty questions that because in, in the Q and A. I want to look at the safe. I want to look at the safe. I don't even look at the So you can do the same thing if you want. If you see me some older person, just send him a letter in the mail and tell him that you learned halacha. That's what's that. Well, I, my, my advice: mix out. Take care of yourself. Next question: Are we allowed to eat from Starbucks? Hey, I'm not sure if the question is eat or drink. I mean, eating in Starbucks, most of the food in Starbucks is not kosher. Um, uh, regarding the drinking from Starbucks, I assume that's the question. Um, uh, so the coffee from Starbucks, so that's a big shaila bechlal regarding coffee. I, I, I assume the question is drinking coffee. Anybody who has who wrote the question wants to volunteer? That was the question. Ah, uh, mistama. Yeah, you can assume so, right? Okay, I'll assume that the question was drinking coffee from Starbucks. That's what I assume. So, the, again, eating, most of the food is not kosher, it's not a shayla bechlal. Regarding the drinking, so, so it all depends on, there's a number of shaylas. There's a shayla regarding the kalim. If they have a kli which only makes pure coffee, it doesn't make anything else, no flavors and no milk and no anything else. And that kli itself is clean. Some of them have fancy machines that have self-cleaned. They don't have to put them in a the dishwasher. They just, it is a system with hot water and soap, cleans itself out, and nothing else goes in over there. Um, that's one situation. Then there are cases where the machines are put into a dishwasher together with other kalim and together with other not kosher foods. Obviously, then that's an issue. So if the machine goes into dishwashers with other kalim, or if there's, the machine has flavors or milk, then, then we're not going to use it at all. Um, that's that's way from Chloe. If it's not clean, it's not hundred percent. So then, when it comes to coffee, so there's a shaila if the coffee has to be bishul yisrael or not. Coffee that was brewed by a goy is not considered bishul akum. Is there a need for it to be brewed by a yid? So there's a um, the rule. Ah, huh? I'm in the middle of talking. No, uh, aren't I? So there's a rule by bishul, and the rule is is that. A food that is not served on a royal pa on a royal table, 
Well, Goy cooks it, you're allowed to eat it. So foods that are, uh, for the, the classical example, people say, if you want to argue, you can, is Rice Krispies. It's if someone cooks right, a guy that makes rice krispies, it's that no one serves rice krispies at a royal table. So therefore, if the guy is, uh, uh, he cooked the rice krispies or whatever it was, pop them, however you make them, then it's not a problem of bishulak. So when it comes to coffee, the question is, coffee served on a royal table or not? Some people say coffee is a regular drink, it's not a royal kind of drink, and therefore, um, coffee does not need to be bishulak Yisrael, and that's how the place came in halacha. The halacha paiskin paskin that coffee brewed by the guy is 100% kosher. However, the Arizal writes that no, that the coffee that was brewed by the guy is osur mitzad bishul akum. And therefore, according to the Arizal, if you're going to a warm, uh, going to a Starbucks and buying their coffee, it's forbidden because it is not kosher, even though the ingredients are 100% kosher because it was brewed by the guy. Are you supposed to take upon yourself this chumra? It all depends, you ask yourself. I spoke to Chosh Vayidin, and some very Chosh Vayidin were not makpid, they, they, they bought the coffee from these places, and some places were, are, are, some people that I know are makpid, and they only brew their own coffee. Now, when you come to coffee machines and gas stations, of Baruch Hashem Apostle, we travel a lot, so there's many different type of machines out there. So some of the machines, you have the coffee, you just put the spout and the coffee comes out. That means that it was brewed already before. And according to Arizal, you should not drink it. But I found, I found some gas stations that have sophisticated machines where you have the, the, the beans that are already uh, are roasted are inside the container. And it takes a few more extra minutes, but you press a few buttons and then it grinds those, uh, those um, beans and then it brews it, then it pours hot water onto them. So in that case, you are actually brewing your own coffee. So that would be fair. The way I understand, I mean, for Shnei there's no, usually those machines have nothing else besides actual beans. In that case, L'Chayr is 100%, even according to Arizal, because you are brewing your own coffee. But uh, otherwise, it's amazing. You, you could be Mahmoud if you want. But like I said, a lot of Russian people are not Mahmoud. So by a quick sorry, you can't One second, he asked first. Yeah? Um, if, 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 it's, if it's the machine that does it, is there a problem? The machine does what? Like it makes coffee. Like I, I just explained how it works. But that a cloud in most of the places, and besides what I described, usually the guy has to put in the the, 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 the ground the ground beans, and he puts in the hot water, and he pours it in, and then it brews it. So he's actually brewing it. It's always through a machine. A pot is a machine also. Everything is not, you know, the, no hands brewing it like this. So the, the guy is the one doing it, and that's the case. And then it makes the machine. One second. Huh? Are you allowed to drink the coffee in Starbucks? Uh, sitting inside the place itself, so that's a different discussion. We got I think maybe that was the, what the bacher meant. Um, that's a question. If the people are going to see you and are going to, it's going to be a, a shail of mar side. If you're sitting and eating there and you're from a yid, so people might think, oh, if he's eating, that's probably all kosher, and I can eat it too. So Rabbi Furman's father-in-law was here a number of years ago, and uh, he uh, someone asked he he actually he did Q and A then. I asked him to do Q and A then, and he said. So he was asked that question. So he said when he was a kid, he remembers he based Thomas Fabrengen. And after Debus Fabrengen, it was 2, 3 in the morning, and his father was driving back from 770 to Flatbush. And he said, down Utica Avenue, there's a White Castle. It's a kind of a, it's a today for a restaurant. And he said that he remembers over there, he says, a Furuma Ayid was walking into the White Castle. It's a, a, a today for a restaurant. And he said, as a kid, he was so shocked. And, and now he's older, he realizes he probably went to the bathroom or get something, with, with the, so maybe a, a soda or something. But just for look, looking as a kid then, the mama shook him up. So the male of Mitzad, that is better not to go into any kind of not kosher place to, to sit. Um, the Pelham Amish today, most of the Fruma world eats and uh, drinks Starbucks coffee. <laughs> Many people, they're not Makhbed on Chal of Yisrael, which is a different conversation. So Ramele, it's not, I don't think you're going to really do much by it. But uh, even if you're not Makhbed on the Chumr of Darizal, you should be Makhbed, not, I would assume, not to be in the place itself. I and mean, you can buy it and walk out, but uh, maybe the same Chumr. I, I don't know the answer for sure. What about, second. Working? Uh? what about working there? What about working there? Not working like as working as part of the store, but people bring their computers on work there. I don't know. You asked me too many questions that I was not preparing. I don't know. Okay, I'm sorry. You have a job in your shoe. What are you working to work in? <laughs> 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 what did you ask? Yeah. What did you ask? I said, I said, I said, I was looking at the same question. I asked him about this question, and he said that, I was told, that um, you, according to Tasha, who it was, but you can't eat there. He said it's an issue of. Um, my science. Oh, about, 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 about,
The way Q&A works is you put the question in the box and I have time to prepare. You can't stop me like that. I'm not really joking. I have all the answers already. I have to go and look it up and prepare. And when I know what I'm saying, I can say, you're embarrassing me. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll put it into the box. If you want to know, I'll look, <laughs> look next time. By Mairev, when do we take the three steps forward after Shemana Esrei? See, by by, by Ma'ariv, you spoke uh, Bechlal every time you dab with a minion, or any time you dab with a minion, Bechlal, actually, not, without a minion, after you do is to show them, you're not supposed to go right back, you have to wait. How long do you have to wait for? So by Shachris and Mincha, you're supposed to stand in your spot till the Chazan gets the Kedusha. You're not supposed to walk around, you're not supposed to go back to your spot till he gets the Kedusha, and then you go back to your spot. By Ma'ariv, there's no Kedusha, but the Baruch is asking till when. So it is, in, in, in Shulchan Aruch, I don't, I don't see, I'm pretty sure it doesn't say anything, but in Svarim it says to wait till Omen Yesh Mirabah. After Shemun Asri, the Chazan gets to, it says Kaddish Tiskabel. So when he gets to Omen Yesh Mirabah, that's when you're supposed to go back. And that is meaning is till Tiskabel itself. It's this, there's a, the Kaddish Tiskabel, or I mean, t- tonight, but the Shabbos, we had uh, only a Chazi Kaddish. So there are five Omens in the, in the Kaddish, in the, till Tiskabel. So according to Allah, after you wait till the third Omen, which is Yesh Mirabah, and the Rebbe's men is to wait for two more omens till the Kaddish Tzkabu. What is a Zov? Maza Zov. Zov is a person that Tumor comes out of his body. It's similar to, to Kerdi, to Zerah Levatala, but it's different. Meaning it's a different type of uh, substance coming out of the person's body. It's a Masadic rice that today doesn't exist. It exists in the times of the, of the Mishnais and the Mesa Mikdosh. <coughs> and the Chayro Mashiach comes, it might come back again, but Akhopanim, that's what a Zov is. Why are we not strict, careful about Yoshon, though on the contrary? So uh, there's a famous uh, Bach, the Bach, uh, uh, there's a Machlik, is this for, just to explain what Chodesh and Yoshon is for those that, don't, those that don't know. Chodesh and Yoshon is the Tvua, the grains, wheat that grows. So whatever was harvested before Pesach, then after Pesach, you're allowed to use it. Whatever was harvested after Pesach, you have to wait till next year to Zionist in the time of the, of the Karben Oimer, only then to use it. So there's a big machlaik as if Yoshan applies on Chutz Lodits or not. Um, some place can say that in Chutz Lodits you have to be careful for Yoshan, and some people say you do not have to be careful for Yoshan. So the Bach, the Bach, his name was, anybody? Huh? Who says? Someone said. Huh? <coughs> you said it. Rabiel Sirkish, he wrote a sefer called Bayis Chadash, and he wrote notes on the Gemara, which everyone's from, most, uh, most Bachim are familiar with him from his Agoy Sabach. So he wrote a, a psaq, he wrote a heter, why Chodesh is not an Isser in Chutzlar. Why it's Mutter in Chutzlar is to eat. Chodesh, you don't have to be mad. And uh, uh, there's a story they say that Baal Shem Tev said that every Tzaddik, when he passes away, he has to go through Gehenna. He wasn't a Lamaza, so he walks through Gehenna. And if it's a big Tzaddik, so, so they turn off Gehenna when he walks through, he shouldn't suffer. So the Bach, because he saved so many people from the Aveda of Chodesh by him with Kayach, the Kayach of his Psaq, he made Chodesh Mutter, so before he passed away, 40 days before he passed away, they already t- turned off Gehenim, so this way when he should walk through 40 days later, it should be so, so much not cool, so, so, so much not hot, so, so much colder. So that's, that was the big hatter of the Bach. The Rebbe spoke about Rabbi Febrenge once, and the Rebbe, from the Rebbe was mashma that the Chabad were not makhbed, the Rebbe said that they're late night. The Rebbe, was, the Rebbe made it sound like people are not makhbed on it, and it's not a humra that uh, you, know, you want to find, but it wasn't like a big deal. Um, it's actually the words that the word daily saw that were definitely makhbed, and lately, the past maybe 15, 20, 30 years, it started becoming popular in America also, for whatever reason, it became, I guess, easier. So today you see many, many of the Hamish children, they say on them, Yoshon, they say that it's all, it's uh, special, it was all, it's, it's no problem of Chodesh. So I guess if it's easy to be Makhbid, then Adarab, Abacher one time, one, one year, he wanted to be Makhbid, he told me he wants to go now to Walmart, and he, if you know, if you, to know Chodesh and Yoshon, you have to know all the protim of the harvest, and what it is, he wanted to go and buy a van full of flowers, he should be able to buy for the whole year, he asked me if it makes sense. 
Do what you want, but when based on Rebbe's sikh, it's mashma that it's not such a big deal. It's a nice humra, but uh, it's not one of the first humras to take apart. But one second, yeah? Yeah? Not to eat chodesh? Yeah. No, I, I, no, I'm saying the other way. To eat yosher? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're no, mocked, no, we're mocked, we're mocked, to not take upon yeah. ourselves the chumrah. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I also thought once. So that's what I remembered. But then people show people told me differently, so I didn't want to say that. But now that you're saying that, I'll, I heard that too. That's what yeah, I remember. But but it's mashma that uh, that is not so. That it's if you want to be mashma, then it's mashma. Do you anything talked about that? Or the, the way I remember the sicha being quoted to me the first time was that Rebbe was saying that that was kibyachum not be performed, but that was like saying it doesn't make sense the chumrah. And then it was, and then afterwards, and I looked it up, and then people told me again. Then I saw there was mashma. The Rebbe was more saying that. No, it's a chumra, but it's not. Uh, many, most people are not. Ma- that was like more saying it casually. Like most people are not mocked on it. It's like not a big deal. That's what I. I didn't look it up now again, so I can't tell you how it came. Just want to come afterwards. Yeah. This is talking about from chosaros uh, to eating in chosaros, or is talking about from Aaron's strong eating No, this is talking about the grains of chosaros. Oh, but if you have the grains. Of- <coughs> no, 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 Should there, be, should there be more emphasis on Sefer HaSichis than Lekut HaSichis? Every person has this Gishmak and Torah which he likes more. I personally have more of a Gishmak and Lekut HaSichis than Sefer HaSichis. Some people have more Gishmak and Sefer HaSichis than Lekut HaSichis. That's a different style. It's all Kedush Kedoshim, it's all the Rebbe's Torah. And every person has what they like. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't see a Sefer why to be Makbin one more than the other. I see a Tam. I, it's a definitely different style. I would understand people that enjoy more Sefer HaSichas. And uh, I understand myself why I enjoy more Lakut HaSichas, but I don't, uh, I don't think there is a dog. You should learn everything, but I don't see why one more than the other. Why do you enjoy What? Why do you enjoy It's a different style. It's more Inyonim. It's not just uh, the dates and the parsha. It's more taking each Inyon, explaining Inyon Bifnei It's more of a, say, it's, uh, it's more of a sheer than a Fabrenge, if you will. Yeah? We, we had this already. Oh, that, that's special. Yeah, that, that look here, that I would try. If, if I would do Sefer HaSichis, when I do Sefer HaSichis, I try to do that first. Yeah. Pastors. That we spoke about last time. Why do we have to say the truth if the truth hurts? And we can't hurt another Yid. So, Lav Dafka, you have to say the truth. There's a story. There was the Friedrich Rebbe asked Rabbi Chacha Fagan once to, to tell a certain Yid to do, to either be a teacher or something, to do so, to tell a certain year to do something. Uh, I think uh, to be a mashpia even. And Rab Chacha Fagin didn't want to tell the free the Rebbe that that yid was a moser. That yid ended up uh, get, had connections to the KGB, and he was not a person that you can trust. And even though the free the Rebbe has ruach hakaidish, but Sadiqim don't always use their ruach hakaidish, and therefore the way he spoke is in a way that he asked Rab Chacha Fagin to ask this chaser to be a mashpia. Or the person had been a chassid, if you want to call him still a chassid, whatever it may be. And Abchat Shafiqin did not tell the Fridi Kareb. He kept pushing it. Somehow he got it out. He didn't, he didn't end up telling him. He, made the, he didn't pass on the message. However, however the, I forget the details of the story, how it played out, but that was the title. So indeed, if the truth hurts, you don't, have, you don't have to say the truth. However, when just like when it comes to a doctor, when certain times the only way to heal is by uh, make, giving a shot, so sometimes if the truth, the only way to help someone is by telling him the truth, and yes, you have to tell him the truth, even though it's going to hurt, because the goal is to make him feel better. Why is the Ari called the Ari Zal? So who, first of all, who knows what such a of Ari? Arya? I don't know. Rosh Tevis. Very good. Ashkenazi Rabbi Yitzchak Zechariah Levracha. There's two other ones. Ashken, not two ones. Uh, one other one. Eliki. Eliki Rabbi Yitzchak Zechariah Levracha. The godly one. Um, why is he called Ari Zal? I don't know why he was specifically, but the Rebbe someone is called him Ari Zal Achai, the Ari Achai. So why specifically by him I didn't see, but uh, the pastor Zechariah Levracha is a title. Of many people that we have after they pass away, and that became, I guess, a word for itself. Ari Zal. If the main reason that you can't bet is because of a smachta, and the Mishnah Kodal the Madala sounds like if it's something in your control, it's not a smachta, then would getting a skill-based game that you are playing be considered an a smachta? 
So I don't think so. I think if it's like a skill-based game, even though there's an element of, of uh, luck to it, but if it's basically based on skill, and there's an element of skill to it, then it would not be betting, and it would be considered to be, um, he says, it's not considered, it's not a smachta. Betting is, there's other problems with betting. Other problems with betting are with smichas das, you hope you're going to get your money, and so on. There's also a problem of yesh rekronis, people that are wasting their time. But if you're just playing yourself a game, I mean, playing a game just uh, without any money involved and stand betting, I don't think is a big, a big deal either. I mean, besides the waste of time part of it, but not the, the betting part of it. But if it's a real game versus other people with money, so um, even with skills, so for example, it talks about, not mamish, but the concept of racing for money. So even over there, there's an issue. So when you're doing it for money, there's always a problem, even though you think you have the better skill. But you don't really you, you, you don't really know what's going to end up happening, and therefore there's an element of 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 gazelistus of when you win or because when you lose you don't want to give away the money. So in short, if it's just for a game, I don't see an issue. But if it's actually money involved, the pashas is still a problem. Can I take a psychedelics? Psychedelics? How do you say it? Psychedelics. The book is called wrong. Um, uh, um, mushrooms, the ty- type of drugs. No, you're not allowed to take the kinds of drugs. I just did some research on that, and that's why I know it's spelled wrong. And it says that there's no safe way of taking it, so it's awesome. <coughs> Isn't getting married at 18 only if you did everything Pirkei Yavis, the Mishnah said? I assume the Bacharans are addressing to Ben Hamish, to Mikra, Ben Esser, the Mishnah, and so on. So the answer is no, because we see that even though people change the method of learning, but when it came to that Indian, the minute by Klal Yisrael, especially by the Sfardim, was all the years was to still continue to be makbid on this Indian. So therefore, it's not connected to that, uh, to that Prat. <coughs> it's not connected to the first parts of the Mishnah. What should someone do if he's addicted to not appropriate things? So, we spoke about this in the past, right? Yeah? I was when I was abruptly cut off. And now it's the uh, balls in my court. I can do whatever I want. Um, so I, I I'll repeat what I said then. The question is, what's considered a, an addiction? That's the big child. Just because a person has a yitzhara doesn't mean he's addicted. His addiction means that a person cannot control himself. How do I know if I can control myself or not? I want to stop. I don't want to stop. So there are many different ways of checking it out. I mean, there's, there's what's called a 90-day um, the test where a person tries for nine. Says, "I'll try for 90 days now. If you can't keep yourself clean for whatever the addiction is for 90 days, that could mean there's a problem." It all, all, all depends on what, or what to do. So there's many different methods in, in, inside the, in the veld. And the way of Torah, the, the way the Rambam says, and it's brought down Kisah Shachon Aruch, is a person should immerse himself in Torah. That's the, that's the solution. A person should immerse himself in Torah as much as possible, learn Torah, um, and then when your mind is busy the entire time with Torah, but that cloud, that's the best solution. If a person is immersing himself in Torah and he still has a problem and he's addicted, he can't control himself, that might be in that case a real... Uh, clinical problem and he has to go to a professional. Um, what happens if a Bechor says, I'm not willing to commit myself, to immerse myself in learning 24-7? So then uh, you have to find yourself other solutions. But if you're in Shulchan Aruch, <coughs> in Simen Kufnun, he talks about similar, the same time. It's a toichin and over there, at the end of the sift, he gives a tikkunim, and the tikkunim also help to prevent. So if you want to look for Mara Mekemis, you can check it up over there. But the, the main message always is, the main message to all this, all this, this the Rebbe's Kav and the Chlau Kav is just to Focus on doing good and getting yourself busy with Torah of Aveda. Iker with Torah. After, after immersing yourself in Torah, you should go to a, profet, like a physical professional or a no. spiritual professional? Oh, if you immerse yourself in Torah 24-7 and you still can't control yourself? Well, you should always, every person should have a mentor, which is called a mashpia. And you, then, after that, you still can't, uh, you still didn't change, then you should ask your mentor for advice. But you have, someone has to actually go through with you and see what does it mean that you're addicted, what does that mean? It's, 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 very, it's a very, very broad topic. You can't, you can't, you can't, it's not like when I say ask your personal mashpir, but it's such, such a topic, is so huge. Every person is different. How much and when and where and when does it happen? There's so many, uh, so many different details that can, that can play into it, but it can't be answered. There's, there's books and books about it that address the different situations. And even that, every person, all the books are not enough. If a person is really addicted, he has to have a personal profession. Agut Ruch.